In today's video, I wanna show you guys three different landscape paintings that are great to give a try if you are a beginner with watercolors. I'm gonna be going through how to paint a night sky, a sunset, and also a snowy tree landscape as well. But before we get into that, I wanna talk you through the materials that we're gonna be using for these tutorials. Firstly is the paper. For this one, I use the cold pressed Archer's watercolor paper, but I also have hot pressed paper, which I like to use as well. The hot pressed is a lot smoother and the cold pressed has a bit more texture. So that's up to you what your preference is for what paper you wanna go with. For the watercolors, I'm gonna be using my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors, but again, you can use whatever watercolors you have for this. I'm also gonna be using some white gouache for the highlight and I'm also going to be using some pastels and a fine liner for the sunset landscape as well to show you guys how you can use mixed media with your watercolors. Finally, for some extra highlights, you can go in with a gel pen as well. So let's get straight into it with painting number one and that is going to be the night sky. And the first thing that I did with my cold press sheet of watercolor paper is I divided it into three sections just by using some scotch tape. It was also to divide it so that we have nice borders around our paintings, but also to attach it to the desk so that it doesn't warp and buckle as much. And the first thing that I do is I go in and I pre-wet the paper, just add some plain water all over the side where the night sky is going to be because we are going to be using the wet on wet tech Technique, and that means that we need to pre-wet the paper so that our colors nicely bleed into each other. And so once I've done that, I go in and start adding some pinks and purples and blues to really give a lot of different colors to this night sky look. And I try to keep the lighter colors in the middle and have the darker colors around the outside. And just go in and drop in these colors. I'm even adding some oranges in there and the colors will really nicely bleed into each other because you've got that pre-wet surface. So the colors can move and flow and give this really nice bled outlook. So I'm starting with the pink, adding the pinks and then adding some more darker tones to the outside. The next thing that I'm doing is I'm using some table salt to actually add a really cool effect to this night sky. And I'm mainly targeting that salt towards the middle of the painting. So just sprinkle a very small amount in the middle of the painting and then completely let that first layer dry. Once it is dry, it's time to go and add some more layers. And as you can see, that salt has added a really nice effect to the painting, but I don't want it to be that harsh. So I go in, add more layers. I also want to darken up and give it that really dark night sky feel to it. At the moment, it's a bit light. So I go in, pre-wet the surface again, because we do want our colors still to bleed into each other. And I build up some more pinks and purples and some darker tones at the top and around the sides of our sky. I then let it dry again and then I do the same thing, let it dry, add another layer of water to pre-wet the surface and then drop in even more dark intense colours. I'm mixing some black with some Payne's grey which is a darker blue grey and some purple to give a really nice intense look. Now that I'm happy with those colors and the shadows in our sky, I wanna go in with the gouache. And I use the gouache for two different reasons. Firstly, I'm gonna use it to add little highlights to the galaxy look. And also I'm gonna use it to add loads of stars. And now when I'm painting the stars, I get a flat, I'm using a water brush for this, a flat water brush. And I just load that up with gouache. And then I use my finger to like spray that paint onto the paper. And it's really cool because it gives really tiny stars and also some bigger little splodges as well so you get a nice variety in sizes of the stars so this is great to add loads and loads of stars very quickly to your galaxy sky and once you've done that let everything completely dry again and the final thing that I want to do is just go in with some black paint and add some really nice tree silhouettes just to bring this all together first thing I do is I go in with the brush and just mark in where the trees gonna go that line for the middle of the tree and then I go in sideways with the brush and just add some horizontal lines to add the branches and leaves to the painting and that is it for our first one now let's move on to painting number two, which is the sunset. And the first thing that I do is pre-wet the paper again. And then I start off by doing the sunset part by adding yellows, oranges, and red tones in there. I'm not adding any paint to where the sun is because I want that to be the brightest area. And then I move on and add some blue tones for the water and the ripples, as well as some yellows for the reflection in the water. And I also add the silhouette between the sunset and the water using some purples and I darken 
darken that up as I build up more and more layers. And so I'm when I'm happy with that first layer, I let it completely dry. And then I go back over with more layers, more darker tones to that silhouette. And I even intensify some of the reds in the sunset and add more intense blues for the ripples. And I just add a few layers until I'm happy with that. And I completely let it dry. And then I move on to adding pastels. And the main reason I wanted to use the pastels is to brighten up some of the colors, make them more intense. And also it's an easy way to go in and add shadows. So darken up that silhouette without having to worry about all the colors bleeding into each other. I mainly use the pastels for adding some more intense reds into the sunset sky and also adding more blues to the ripples in the water, as well as adding some more reflections like the whites and the yellows for the reflection of the sunset in the water as well. The main thing that I actually wanted to use the pastels for was going in and using them to draw in the individual crops. And so I used them to draw in the silhouette of the plants. And one thing to mention is when the crop is going over the sun, there's a lot of reds and yellows in there and it's important to get them in and not just do it black so that it looks more realistic. And then finally, I went in with some fine liners just to add in the really detailed bits of the crops where the pastel was a bit too thick. And now finally moving on to painting number three, this is the snowy tree landscape. And again, pre-wet the paper, then I'm going in with just some very light purple tones and a bit of gray on my brush, starting off very light so you can hardly see it because a snowy landscape, the one I painted, you know, there's not really dark, intense colors. It's very soft, very pale. So I wanted to build it up slowly. I started with lighter purples and then built up the more intense purples towards the edges. And I finally went in and I sprinkled a lot of salt over this piece because salt is great with watercolors for giving that snowy effect. It's so, so good for that. So I just went in and I sprinkled some salt, focusing mainly in the middle again, where I wanted the flurry of snow to be. And I completely let that dry. Don't use any heat tool when you're using salt because you wanna give the salt time to actually create the effect. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm actually gonna add some tree silhouettes. I wanted a nice tree in the background and because that looks more distant, I didn't want it to be as dark. So I mixed in more purple tones instead of just doing it black. And I just loosely painted the branches starting with the biggest part of the trunk and then branching out into the individual branches and then even thinner branches coming off of the main branches. And for the one in the front, I used black paint and I did the same process, did the thicker branches and then thin ones coming off them. I also used fine liners to add some really detailed branches as well. And now I wanna move on to adding the bushes. I added some little bushes by the tree just to make it more interesting using some purple and black. And I finally went and I topped the trees with some gouache. And I also splattered the gouache so that we have some really nice little snow droplets and give it a really nice like sparkly effect. And I also used the gouache to finally add some little tall bits of grass, bit of snowy grass in the front as well. Again, to make it more interesting. So those are my free landscape paintings, which are great to have a go at if you are a beginner. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this where I paint different types of things and give little tutorials and like beginner things that you can try. If you do wanna see the real-time versions of each of these paintings, then they are available on my Patreon, as well as over 200 real-time tutorials, which you can get for just a small amount per month. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. Anyway guys, that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here for more tips and tutorial videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.